Welcome back to another episode of the NetBean Tutorials for the Advanced. Now, today is another invention of ours that I actually kind of um, invented a while ago. I don't, okay, there might be people that did this, but I know I did this for myself. So we're going to get into it and I'm going to show you how this amazing tool works. Now, this docking system is kind of like rocket dock, but for your program. It goes on the top here, like a kind of a bar area in this section. And uh, you'll have basically like a home about and etc and etc. And um, basically, when you click the home button, it'll display something over here with a little picture if you want. But I'm just going to show you um, text in the center instead of just doing pictures and the text. It's going to be the same t uh, tutorial and basically it's going to be the same code. So we're going to start off by grabbing our rectangular tool and we're going to go to the top somewhere about here and I'm going to make it. Oh, that big. Okay, fail. This didn't work. I didn't use a rectangle tool, but anyway, you can use that. I'm just gonna shortcut this, and I've got like a black ball kind of thing, but I really want a white one, so I'm gonna switch to that. And um, what do you do afterwards? I'm just gonna edit this out a bit. You wanna add this onto a new layer, by, by the way. Add this onto a new layer, and make this a bit smaller. There we go. Okay, wait. That that's just the same. I hate the snap-on feature. There we go. Once that is done, you can see that it's like a bar at the top, like a website kind of thing. And we want to take off the side to make it look much better. So you want to grab your rectangular marquee tool, which is over here, and you want to hover over this little part here and select this area. Once that is done, you want to go to Select, Modify, Feather. If you're using 72 pixels uh, DPI, um, you want to feather it at 10. I'm not too sure what the others is because I'm not really using the others, but this is for programs and I use it this way. So you're going to feather it at about 10 and hit the delete key while this is activated, the layer one. And it'll give it like a nice kind of feather kind of thing. I'm just going to move it a bit along. There we go. And I want to drop the opacity level down to about uh, 60. 60 looks good. Let's confirm the 60. Now. Once that is done, you can basically see that it has like a nice cool little thing going on and stuff. And now let me just zoom this in for you. And um, I'm going to double click it and open my layer style. And um, go to bevel. And make sure this is set to 90. And I want to bump up the size until it gets nice and cool looking. Just like a small thing to pull it apart from the program. And that looks pretty good. Afterwards, I'm going to go down to my drop shadow make sure your direct distance is set to zero and um, bump up the the size and it kind of pulls it apart from the GUI and this this purple GUI is just it's just my template that uh that I open up I use it all for, for all the tutorials I do I use this purple thing so you, you know what's going on so once that is done I'm gonna add um, a home and about tab so I'm gonna go select my text tool click the center and I'm going to enter home. Now this 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 font I'm using is called Kravitz. Now you can download this. I'll get the I'll get the link for you and I'll put it in the description. And it's basically it comes with these three. It's the normal one which is like Arial and then the thermal one is like Arial bold and then the exothermal which is like Arial black. But the font is really cool as you can see it like mixes up a bit of the capitals and uh, lowercase letters and it gives it a good feel. Afterwards, once you highlight this out, make sure the text is white and you're going to drop the size down to about what looks good there, 6, 6 looks good. Afterwards, you're going to move this over, just drag it on top of your bar, make sure the layer is above it, obviously, otherwise you won't see it. And once that is done, you can basically see how it's looking. And I'm going to make this a bit smaller, so I'm going to go 5 maybe, 5, yeah, 5 looks probably look good. Okay, 5 is looking amazing. So I'm going to leave it there, and I'm going to duplicate this layer, click the, the auto select, or what is this, I don't know the names, but here yeah, it's this button, you're going to hold on shift, and make sure the, the copied layer is um, selected, hold on shift and just, just bump up the right key, and just move it along. Now you can obviously add much more, but I'm not going to do that, because I'm just going to show you a small bit of it, and then you can go and experiment and create your own ones. Now I know that some of you don't have Photoshop. So I'm going to put this like bar thing, this docking system in the uh, description of a PNG so you can just drag it into your program or edit it in paint and just save over your checks and stuff 
and then put it into your program and then program it like I would do later on. So after that you want to grab your text tool again and go to the second home and change this to about obviously because we have the about tab. Once that is done you want to make it look a bit cooler so let's grab the rectangular tool again make a little cool little bar thing. Oh, that looks pretty good and we're going to rasterize this by right clicking and rasterizing later go up to here-ish center this out with your arrow keys and yeah that, that looks pretty good yeah. and I want to take this and I want to copy it and do the same by holding shift and yeah that looks pretty good afterwards let's edit the text now so we're going to double click the home layer open up layer styles again and um, click the bevel make sure the settings I told you like the angle is 90 and uh, the size just bump it up until we can just make out it a bit make like a cool gradient effect it gives it and I'm gonna go down to my drop shadow give it a nice drop shadow make the make sure the distance is set to zero and I'm gonna give it something about there once it is done you can just go ahead and hold on control and alt and click the FX button which is FX obviously and bring it over to the about so that immediately adapts to these two and adopts it so afterwards, uh, what I want to do is I want to do the same to the two rectangular elements that I've added so then repeat the process control alt grab the FX drag it up to the first layer once that is done I'm gonna go ahead and add my text so we're gonna need to make a text that fits over here and now I'm just gonna do this in an example so I'm gonna add text instead of pictures and stuff so um, I've typed out a few for like home which is this basically what you need to do is just gonna create um, a text uh, boundary over here and then add your text in it um, and then to see how this would actually look the reason why I do this in a separate document is so I can drag it over and I can actually see what it would look like if I put it here and it looks pretty cool whatever whatever that's what it looked like now um, I'm gonna delete this quick and um, I've got my text here but now you can see that the advantage thing is kinda blocked off so I'm gonna make it a bit smaller until it all there we go oh man now the information there oh, you know what I'm just gonna bump that up oh my god anyway I'm just you know if you, you, you must be really good you should be really good with text better than me of course because I don't like using this text tool I normally do it in a different program and bring it in but anyway now that's done we're gonna save this so I'm gonna take off my black layer which is just for display take it off um, and before we actually take this off let's let's layer style this and make it a bit cooler oh my gosh there we go Photoshop gives me trouble sometimes Afterwards, you want to be able to impose this thing. Mm, that looks pretty cool. Drop shadow. You want to bring it up to about seven pixels. I know you can't see that, but um, yeah, it kind of stands out when you use it. So afterwards, um, I'm gonna save this as a PNG. So go down wherever your location is. Save it as PNG. As call it home PNG. It's fine. Save, press OK, and we can close this now. And yes, save the changes to a PSD file, whatever. Go down to the about which I've created again. And um, I want to actually uh, edit this as well so it doesn't stand out like the other one and look like all plain and stuff. So I'm going to do the same thing so it looks good. Run about there ish. Layer style's about 5. 7 actually, yes almost forgot that. Afterwards I want to take off my background layer and then save it as a PNG. Basically you're repeating the steps. Save it as a bot. Now that that is done, um, you can close this file, save your changes, whatever, whatever. And um, we want to kind of crop this now. But before we do that, I'm going to create a nice cool little thing going on in the middle here so it doesn't look too plain. 
So I'm going to grab my rounded triangular tool, just right click this, and we're going to just drag it out till we get something like this. And uh, I'm going to rasterize this, but before that, let's just change this color to about like a grayish color, like that kind of color. If you want the color, it is this. Let me just show you quick. 383737. That is the code. Afterwards, you can rasterize. And uh, we're going to center this layer because it's not centered. And um, click the layer while holding on control and click the background layer. And then you go down to your move tool. And then you're going to click this button at the top here, which will center it in the middle of the, of the GUI. And then correct the axes, which is this button. Align the horizontal centers. Yes, that's exactly what it is. Afterwards, we're going to edit this. So layer styles, bring it up again. Double click. Bevel and emboss. Let's bump up this. Let's bump that off. Yeah, looks pretty good. Uh, drop the white a bit and add a drop shadow. Always brings out the cool side of the program. Yes, how this looks. Uh, what can we do here? Make it stand out. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Now that is that is done, you can click OK. And uh, let's bring in our text to see how it would look. So I'm going to go open and there's my two files that I've saved. Double hold on control and select both. And click open. Now that is done. Now I'm going to drag this home to the tutorial GUI or whatever GUI it was. And uh, see that it doesn't fit. So we got a problem here. So I'm going to go select this again. The surrounded triangular thing, rectangular thing, sorry. And I'm going to hold on shift and alt and bring this up a bit. That looks pretty good. Once that is done, you can see that um, it all blends nicely together, whatnot, see how it goes. And then we know that that is sorted, so we're going to take this out. Um, let's try the about. This should fit. If it does, I'm going to kill myself. Okay, fits perfectly. Afterwards, you can just close it up. And I'm going to save this GUI as, um, let's save it as, actually, let's take out this rectangular part and this. I'm going to group these by selecting all the layers just for the tab that is the stocking system. And uh, just click the bottom one. And hold on shift and go to the last one. Or you can just hold on control and select them individually. And hold on control and G to group them. Once that is done, you can just see that once I turn all of these on, I can just turn one group off and they'll all disappear. That makes life so much easier. Now that that is done, we can just save this GUI quick. Yeah, we're going to save the GUI. Sorry, I just need to turn this back on. And we're going to save this as tutorial GUI 3. And we're going to make it a PNG. PNG is the best. kind of like it. Better than JPEG. I've learned some stuff over it about my partner telling me that it's better for gradient and stuff. So, yeah, we're going to use that. And once that is done, we can just go, go ahead and close Photoshop up. We don't need this anymore. You can go. Once that is closed, when I go down, and this is actually the Rocket Duck system I was telling you about now. Obviously, the program doesn't have the cool animation stuff, but um, I'm going to be doing animation in Photoshop and tutorials soon. So, if you want it, you can check that out. And we just want to open up NetBeans now. Okay, now that you can see that we have brought this into Photoshop, and now, sorry, not Photoshop, NetBeans. And uh, once it's in NetBeans, uh, we can see that I have my old GUI here. So what you're going to do is you want to add in your new GUI. So um, basically you want to go up to wherever you save the file and click it. Go up to your home bar at the top. Or hover over the NetBeans IDE and just bring it into your, your document here. Afterwards you want to just change this now. So just click the layer that is selected on for the background. And go down to icon up here in the property tab. If you don't have this here you can just go up to window and click properties whatever you want over here. Uh, but if you don't have that, you can just right click and go down to properties and you, you'll be sorted. Afterwards, you're going to click this and just change this thing to whatever the name is, which is 3. And it close. Now, once that is done, you can see that it's brought up this nice looking cool 
UI that I developed. Afterwards, you can go down to your palette and get a label, a J label, and just spread it out from the top here. That looks pretty good. Just bring this above your background layer so you see it, and stretch this out along the tab over here. Afterwards, you can just take out the text, and um, you basically you're done so far. So you just want to add uh, the J label over the home button and uh, bring it up of course so you can see it take away the text and let's bring this down a bit because we have to and basically this is going to create links if you know what I mean to the buttons instead of just making indivi individual buttons and bringing it to um, NetBeans uh, let's bring this out a bit why aren't we making this easy for me Once that is centered, which I'm going to do now, NetBeans obviously doesn't like me. There we go. Now that is centered, we got our two layers at the top, and we got the center one, which is here. Uh, we're gonna bring in the two text field things that we added in before. So now go up to wherever I saved it. Now that I've brought it into NetBeans, you can see that I have it here. You can use the same steps that I've done to basically create it. And now, we, when you start up the program, it's it's set to be on the home tab. So um, I'm going to set this as the icon as home PNG. Hang on. Where's where the heart lies? Oh, yep. There you go. Now that it's there, um, once we click this, it's going to bring up. Um, we need to tell the program now that once we click this home button here but you want to change the variable name to home and then the next one obviously to about and we're going to begin encoding now so once we've done that we're going to right click the home icon or J label go to mouse I'm sorry events mouse and then clicked once that is done, you want to input your code here to say that if it's clicked, which is what this is for, that it's going to do a command. So we're going to go here quick, right click this. I'll, I'll put the code into like a kind of text file so you can get it and just obviously change the stuff around. And I'm going to paste this in here. Now this JLabel 12, we don't want. It's called... Um, no, it actually is called JLabel 12, sorry. That's actually, they're going to say that once the home link is clicked, JLabel 12, which is the center plot for our text, is going to change into the home. Yes, this is, she's going to change into home PNG. Afterwards, you're going to do the same for the about field. Do the same. And we're going to click paste again. Copy paste. Story of my life. I'm going to double click this and change it to about. So basically, what's going to happen is, once we run this, so once this is opened up and running, basically, this is what's going to happen. Click the home, it'll change over here. Click the about, and it'll change over here. So that concludes our tutorial. And um, the code will be in a text file. And also, the new NetBeans 3 is out, so make sure you get that, because our new tutorial is going to be in NetBeans 7.3. And um, have a great day.